Welcome, and thank you for joining us for our next product demonstration, Circulus End-to-End -end AP Automation and Outsourcing Solutions. This product demonstration is brought to you by IOFM and sponsored by Circulus. My name is Mark Brousseau, President of Brousseau & Associates. I'll be your moderator for this product demonstration. I have a few housekeeping notes to go over before we get started. If you have any technical questions or issues, please use the chat box and a member of the IOFM team will respond to you right away. If you have any issues with audio, please click to make sure your computer speakers are on. If you happen to get disconnected, please try to log back in. If you continue to experience difficulty, please email IOFM virtual at iofm.com and someone will respond to you right away. We encourage you to ask questions throughout the product demonstration. Simply use the chat box on your screen to type your questions for Diane and to submit them to me. I'll ask Diane those questions at the end of her product demonstration. If we're unable to get to all of your product related questions, Diane will respond to you after the event via email. With all of that out of the way, it's now my pleasure to hand things off to Diane to show you the Circulus end-to-end -end AP automation product and outsourcing solutions. Diane, take it away. Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm on some uh, game show. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, so uh, as he said, I'm Diane Gasparro. I've been with Circulus for 14 years. And uh, in the, we've been in the AP automation and outsourced technology space. We began actually in 98 as XT Global. I'm just gonna spend, I'm gonna say three minutes uh, on the high level overview of who we are though. And then we'll go straight into the demo. Um, as I said, we've been doing AP automation since 2006. We have three business divisions. We have IT services, we have dev centers, and we have BPO centers. And we utilize all of these for our clients. We, we put together hybrid solutions, depending on what they are needing and looking for. Um, we, we spend a lot of time with our relationship with our clients. They stay with us uh, because we deliver what we promise. And we do invest a lot in our also certifications, partnerships. We've won lots of awards. Um, just saying that we're good at what we do and we know what we're doing in the AP automation space. It's not an easy animal to attack and we do it very well. So we got into this market, um, as you know, a while back, we noticed there were some common challenges why companies had not had a successful AP automation implementation. And a lot of times it was because the robust solutions were too expensive, uh, they took too much IT bandwidth, and many times there were issues around accuracy, vendor adoption, some flexibility. So when we entered the market, we addressed those challenges. Um, we have minimal upfront expense, minimal IT involvement. We provide 99% accuracy on every invoice day one. And this was important when we studied the market because we found that this helped companies eliminate the risk of not getting the labor savings they were expecting because their team was busy quality checking data, thousands of vendors, thousands of formats, verbiages, and so on, new vendors, old vendors. But if we guarantee the accuracy on every field, on every invoice, day one, then that just eliminated that risk. They don't have to worry about that. And then we provide flexible invoice submission. You know, vendors are like herding cats. <laughs> um, you can have the vendor send it in. It doesn't matter. It could be EDI, PDF, Word. Um, it could be Excel, maybe even handwritten. And all of those will still guarantee the accuracy. And then we have very configurable workflow rules. And that's because if every account we've worked with, there's always some kind of idiosyncrasy. And if we can adjust and incorporate that, then they don't have to work on certain things outside of their uh, automation piece. So we are a cloud solution. Uh, we are in Oracle's cloud, that's where we're hosted, but we are ERP agnostic. And the invoices come into the cloud. 
either by the vendor directly or by employees. And they can come in in any avenue. And as I mentioned, any format. And, you know, it could be PO Box services. Uh, we have proprietary scanning software as well. And email, of course, that's big these days. Everybody has email. But everything that comes into the cloud, then overnight, our system will capture the data. It'll quality check it uh, down to every line item field. And, and that's critical when you're trying to achieve that touchless PO matching. And then we apply the business rules. We apply the workflow rules and everything is housed and shared in the portal the next morning. If the invoice does match everything on the purchase order, that process is touchless. And in the morning, it'll be housed in your ERP for payment. If it, if it does break some of these rules or if it's a non-PO, it'll route automatically to the exception handlers and the approvers. And we're not license-based either. So if you've got people anywhere in the company that tend to call and ask questions, you can give them guest secure rule-based access and the same with vendors, you can, you can let the vendors have secure guest role-based access. So they minimize those calls in as well. And then we have a mobile app. And right now with this environment of working remote, that's helpful for approvers. So I said, as I promised, three minutes. And now I will go ahead and we'll go straight to the demo. All right, we said again that it's a cloud-based uh, and I've mentioned that we're very robust and flexible. What I hope you'll see now is also that we're very user-friendly. Now I'm gonna log in as a manager. We do uh, support SSO. So if that's something that you utilize, we can accommodate that. And when I log in as a manager, my session's expired, good. <laughs> Let's do that again. That's what you get for, um, oh goodness sakes. It's a good thing I don't curse. Let's try this again. There we go. I'm laughing because this is being recorded, right? Um, so again, I'm gonna log in as a manager. And when I log in, I'm gonna have a dashboard where I see all my tasks and it has escalations, audit trails. But as a manager, I'm also gonna see all my team's tasks. And you can drill down on anything that's in your dashboard. So you can see um, everything your team is working on. And again, notice that all the data is already at that 99% plus accuracy. So your team doesn't have to spend time doing any kind of data clearing, corrections, uh, mapping kind of, it's all gonna be ready to go when they log in. And you don't just have um, access to your team, you also have access to different instances. So a lot of companies these days have multiple ERPs because of acquisitions. So if you do have that, we can accommodate multiple instances here. Then our dashboard goes a step further than uh, some, because in these 14 years, what we noticed was AP tells us that not only our tasks, there's some manual things about tasks that we can automate, but communication can be very timely. Uh, and I'm sorry, time consuming. And so in our inquiry notes, we allow uh, people to organize their questions. You don't have to worry about where was my question? Is it in an email? Did I make a phone call? Everything is right here. Uh, you can see the image for the question. You can see the, the question conversation. So you don't have to, again, wonder and worry about, did somebody answer them yet? Or who do I need to ping? Because this dashboard also shows if somebody doesn't respond, it'll escalate and it does have audit trails, just like your uh, tasks do. Then we try to make it easy to, to answer questions. You can drill down here as well and see what's assigned to you, but you can also do the flyout. And if I know exactly what this is, I can type it right here. I can say, yep, that's it. But if I don't know the answer, I can easily see the image. And if I still think, you know, I wanna know the whole conversation, I can go to the document itself 
and I can look at the entire string of conversations. And right now I'm going to, uh, there you go. So you can see if a year from now, somebody says, why did you do that? You can say, well, Julie said that I should do it. So everything has your date and time stamps, escalations, audit trails around communication. And the more global we are, the more communication that we can, issues we can solve, the better. I'm gonna try to delete some of this Zoom stuff so I don't run into this as I'm doing my demo. All right, so. Now that we've discussed the dashboard and all of the functionality, let's uh, log in and look at how we deal with non-PO invoices. I'm gonna log in first as a analyst. Um, again, when I drill down, all the data will be finished. When I work in my queue, I can filter by any of the operators uh, that are existing. And I might say, well, I just wanna start with something that starts with a D, and maybe I wanna work with the high dollar invoices so I can filter by high dollar invoices and then just click on them and work on that specific invoice. Every field in our portal is custom configured to our client requirements. So you could have 10 header fields, you could have 40 header fields. It's totally up to your business needs, your business process. Every field that we put into your implementation, we will ask you, how do you want it displayed? You know, do you want it as a dropdown? Do you want it as a calendar? Do you want us to auto-populate it? Could we populate payment terms from your vendor master? And do you want us to auto-calculate where we look at the payment terms and we can say, well, according to the invoice date and the total, here's the discount amount and the discount due dates. It might be something you don't want editable. There might be something confidential. And we are global. So we do uh, accommodate multiple currencies, multiple languages. But all of this is custom configured to your needs. Now, the right side of the screen, whenever you're in a document, you will be able to open up the image. If you use two screens, it was designed to use two screens. You've got the document image. You've got the communicator that we spoke about where you can see all of the notes associated with um, this particular invoice. These are different conversations. If you want to have a conversation with the vendor, you would simply click visible to vendors. And then you could have your escalations and audit trails with your vendors as well. And then supporting documents. These are not questions. This is information that you want to stay with the document for the life of the, the document. You can um, put an attachment in here that you want to be associated. Um, you might actually want to do some preset notes where you don't even have to type. And you can type accordingly, but whether you're typing uh, or using your preset notes, everything is gonna have your audit trail. Who did this? date and time stamps. And again, stays with the invoice for the, most people keep it seven years, some do 10 years. And then you have your audit trails. This is gonna just give you a look at who, what, when, where, and how for all of the information around the invoice. So down below, if it's a non-PO invoice, of course, you're gonna need GL coding. We have very robust options for GL coding because this can be, again, a time consuming effort. We can partially auto GL code by business rules. That's very common for us. We can totally uh, populate all the GL string according to business rules. And we do that often as well. And if, of course, these fields will represent your GL string and we will integrate your chart of accounts so that people can come in if they don't auto-populate, they can find what they're looking for either by alpha or numeric. And then as you select your GL string, we also accommodate whatever your uh, combo edit rules are. So whatever is possible with the previous part of your GL string, it'll filter it for combo edit rules. The workflow, again, robust workflow options, we simply mirror the exact approval workflow you're looking for. Uh, we do accommodate parallel, stair-step. Uh, you, can, you can approve your invoices by line, 
by geo lines if you want, where certain lines go to one person and something goes to somebody else. So very robust approval workflow for your non-PO invoices. Now approval workflow is one thing, exception handling workflow is another. And to use some examples for that, I'm going to log in as a buyer because that's where I see in reality, a lot of exceptions can take place. So I've saved a search here with a certain PO number. And mo those of you on this uh, WebEx that do use POs, you probably have a scenario where you have multiple invoices with one PO number. The happy path, we've already talked about the happy path. The happy path is our system extracts all of this data and because it's 99% accurate down to the line items, it's touchless. This went straight through, housed it in the ERP for payment, and you can find any of these in the portal by any of the fields. So I searched, of course, by PO number. I could have searched by invoice, uh, date, vendor, and be able to research it at any time. But all of those invoices that come through and match are touchless. They just went through and nobody had to do a thing. And that's a beautiful happy path. But as we know, that's not always the case with POs. So we go a step further. If an invoice comes in, and let's use an example that it's a unit price mismatch. The system can automatically route it. And a lot of times, because practice is we can route it to the buyer in the PO feed. That's a common practice, but you don't have to do that. You can route it where you want but the system's gonna automatically tell you what the issue is down to the line item. And that's big because if you do have POs with multiple line items, it's labor intensive to try to figure out, okay, this is the invoice total, but it doesn't match the purchase order. Is it quantity? Is it unit price? But now you don't have to think about that. It just shows you right here and the user can click on the details and they can see, well, yep, it's line one, and it says it's a price mismatch, it's 728.19. Well, what does the PO say it is? Okay, the PO says 660.75. So there's the discrepancy. And if, uh, as you work this exception, if you say, you know what, I messed up, it really should have been 728.19. If I go back and fix that PO, this exception, our system automatically clears the exception and pushes it in to the ERP. And the same goes for if it's a three-way match missing a receiver. As soon as the receiver feed comes in, it'll automatically clear out that exception and push it in for payment. So we've talked about um, exception handling workflows. Again, those are all configured. We have a guide with maybe 60 possible exceptions we see people have and suggestions on how to route them, but it's totally up to you. And since we're in the, uh, the search area, looking at these, the search capabilities are extremely robust. Any um, searching can be done by any status, any field in the entire portal in any combination. And it can be header, it can be line item, it can be GL segments. Any combination can be searched and within seconds, you'll have your search criteria and you can export to Excel where you can slice and dice it or you can open up images, conversations or the actual document. And you can save your searches. Um, I've saved a search here that shows every invoice that's not sitting there ready for pay. And again, I can come in within seconds and I'll be able to see all my outstanding liabilities that are not sitting in my ERP. And I can export it to Excel and get totals for you. So very robust search capabilities. Of course, there are KPIs as well to give you high level overviews when you log in of what's come in for the day, aging and spend. And we do have customer reports that go out daily. Uh, the customer reports are also flexible up to whatever your needs are, but common is exception uh, reporting and life cycle reporting because you can only, uh, inspect and, and fix issues when you can find them. The payment plus search, this allows you to be able to search payment information. So sometimes a vendor might call and say, you didn't pay me. 
you know that you paid them, but they don't remember what specific invoices that apply to. So you could go in here and put a check number and see all of the invoices that apply to that check number and easily answer vendor questions. And of course the vendors have free access that's secure and role-based. It's only for their invoices and they could come in and do the same without calling you. So you've got um, vendor access that's secure to just their invoices. We do include um, proprietary scanning software. This was a lot bigger before COVID. Now with COVID, I think a lot of people have gotten most of their invoices to come in by email. But the proprietary scanning software does allow you to scan without having to worry about separator sheets. We have a functionality here that has an automatic separator sheet in it. You can directly upload into the portal. And we have online forms. So these are not restricted to just expense reports, payment requests. It can be other document types, but every one of these online forms can be configured with their own workflow rules, um, their own business rules. And again, it does not even have to be AP related. Some people put in uh, vendor related documents like um, W9s. So that is where we, we um, can be a little bit more flexible than a lot of solutions on the market. So I think we have come close to the end. I will go ahead and reshow my PowerPoint here and reiterate that because this conference is virtual and because we no longer have those associated costs, we are offering uh, free implementation fees for 2020 projects. We know that you're not going to uh, get implemented in 2020. We're already in December. But if you get started in 2020, that qualifies. And we'd love to do an in-depth demo to go over our pricing model and uh, more information about your business needs. And so Mark, I will turn it over to you for any questions. Thank you so much, Diane. And as Diane said, we're now moving into the Q&A portion of this product demonstration. If you haven't submitted your question yet, or if you've thought of another question for Diane, go ahead and use your chat tool to submit them to me now. And since you have zero implementation fees displayed on the screen, Diane, I will start there with a question from Tanya. She wants to know what's involved with implementing your solution. That's a good question. Um, we have always been able to implement virtually, by the way, even before COVID, because we're a cloud solution. And I did pull this up in case anybody asked that. It's hard to remember everything you want in a solution because AP is a complex animal. I mean, there's a lot of knowledge in people's heads. So we've taken over the years common things that people do like in their implementation. And we provide our clients with this implementation guide where we give examples, suggestions, and then we do um, conference calls. We get your feedback. We get all the information for your implementation, what fields you want, what's exceptions, what uh, auto computations, your workflows. And then we do the heavy lifting. And that's where I think I mentioned that we have minimal uh, IT involvement. We also help your IT know how to do the data feeds back and forth with us. And we guide that process. And for the most part, if you get your data back to us on a timely matter when we ask these questions, we can implement anywhere from eight to 12 weeks. And our implementation, oh, it's amusing, it's all inclusive. And it was minimal, but now it's all inclusive and it's free. So there you go. Can't beat that price. No. Tammy is wondering what ERPs you integrate with and do you have direct connections to any ERPs? So we are ERP agnostic. Over the 14 years, we've even, we've even integrated with homegrown solutions. So um, we do, like I said, I'm just going to put this up to have something that's not boring to look at. There you go. So we do integrate with any ERP. We do have direct connections with Oracle and options for SAP. 
but we can integrate through SFTP sites with any ERP. Susan is asking whether there's a limit to the number of line items you can handle. She notes her organization has some invoices that have more than 300 line items. Yes, we can handle, I'm smiling, I guess. I'm not watching my video, but I assume I'm, I'm being still shown. Um, <laughs> you are. <laughs> we, we have a client that's a Fortune 50 telco company that many times has 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 lines. Get so, out of here. Yeah. Are they splitting it or how are they handling it with your system? They well, we, we extract all the line items. They don't, they GL coded a header, but they need all that line item detail for audit purposes. Mm -hmm, right. So um, we extract all those lines, but it only is GL coded at a header. Roger's asking what happens when you receive an invoice from a new supplier? So if it's not in your vendor master, then it'll come into your portal as an exception to AP that says unknown vendor. And we do integrate your vendor master in your solution. So once you have, I'll go ahead and log into, I think a picture's worth a thousand words and less boring. So if an exception came in as an unknown vendor, once the vendor comes in, then you will have the ability to come in here and search on the vendor, click the button and associate it. Now, in terms of an unknown supplier, we also have the ability, if you want, to do a, uh, we talked about these web-based forms and there are some options for, it's not um, an end-to-end -end supplier onboarding, but you can have some web-based forms that help with your supplier onboarding as well. And hopefully I answered that question not too complex. Okay, lots of questions coming in. Keep them coming, folks. Melanie is asking, is there a limited amount of time that a vendor has to look up their own invoice, such as 90 days? A limited amount of time that a vendor has to look up their invoice. No, no. Um, our, I had to kind of get that straight in my head. Your all-inclusive per invoice rate is good for the length of the invoice history, which for most companies is seven years. But I know when our companies, our clients have international, we do also keep them 10 years. And the answer is no, there is no limit to when the vendor could come in and look at their invoice. I noted there was a question in the queue regarding that tax and Latin American taxes. Do you support those? Yes, we do. And that's what I say. Well, don't say it like that, Diane. Well, <laughs> It is, I say it because AP automation, if you don't know what you're doing, um, doesn't work well. And so we are, <laughs> we are very versed and have European clients and deal with VAT tax. There's multiple ways to do it. Some people have VAT tax at a header. Some people have it as a line item. Uh, we have clients that have VAT tax with, um, a di you know what I think? I don't know if I have it in this other instance, but you can also have that tax business rules where an if then situation occurs um, with your VAT tax. I don't think I have the example here, but I can show you if you wanna, if it's interesting, we can set up a demo and show you how some of our clients handle that tax. Maria is asking whether your solution is viable for processing 500 to 750 invoices per day. Yes, uh, we have a client that is a, again, a Fortune 50 client. We process nearly a million documents a month for them. So because we're a per document rate, we can be a, an immediate ROI for a low volume client or a high volume client because it's all uh, volume based. Teresa is asking whether your solution can process handwritten invoices, the arch enemy of yes. automation, Diane. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I, and I keep using examples because uh, it helps you to understand. I guess one of our clients we've had for over a decade is a fleet company and their invoices many times are written on the top of a tow truck, handwritten. So much like I said back in the beginning, even the guarantee of accuracy 
is included in handwritten. And the reason for that is remember that we have the QC step here. And so we're guaranteeing when the, when the invoice and that information is presented in your portal, it doesn't matter if it's handwritten, um, unless it's in magic ink, <laughs> it's gonna be 99% plus accurate in your portal the next morning. Give out those decoder pens. Doug, right. <laughs> Doug is wondering whether you can convert invoice data to EDI 810 format. Yes, we can. And there was a similar question I saw, whether you can accept electronic invoices into your solution. Yes, we can on both accounts. So this transfer of information here, whether we do SFTP or direct integration, um, if your preference is to us, to send back the finished information into your ERP mm -hmm. in that EDI format, then we will do that. Um, and again, if you have a client that wants to present their EDI here, some of our clients um, can take EDI themselves, so they don't put EDI into our portal. But I also have a client um, that's a Fortune 500 client. They actually like the EDI to come into our portal as well, so everything's in one place and they have a third party um, solution that's industry specific. And then they send us that data through EDI and we house that data so that when people do searches, it's all together and reporting. Yeah, that sounds like a good approach. Tim is wondering how it is that you can ensure this 99% accuracy that you spoke of. Right here, <laughs> it's the quality assurance. Again, in doing this for 14 years, we have our own dev centers. We've tested every kind of um, automation technology, whether it's AI, OCR. When you deal with thousands of vendors, format verbiages, um, this step is what guarantees the 99% accuracy and it's seamless for you. So you don't, you don't know anything other than when it comes in, it's finished and it has that accuracy level. But that's how you guarantee the accuracy level, is our people remote into the cloud and make sure and do all the quality checking. Susan wants to know more about your escalation procedures for workflows. So the escalation procedures are custom configured. When we configure uh, your implementation, one of the questions here, but, oh gosh, I happen to be on it. <laughs> Look at that. Um, so we're going to ask you, how many days do you want in between escalations? How many levels of escalations do you want? Where do you want the escalations to go to? So that's, again, a, a custom configuration. And then, of course, you will note it in, when, you're in your, uh, when you're in your dashboard. It'll show if you have things that are escalated. Susan Wright said, right now we outsource our scanning and uploading of invoices. Do you also scan invoices for customers? Yes, we do. And that's what, what we do that. And we also have, so the reason we have a flexible, um, lots of options is because vendors are like herding cats. <laughs> you know, the more flexibility you have, the better. So remember I said we had the built-in web scan. If you happen to have a remote office, I maybe mean, it could be a global office and we can't scan them for you, but we do have PO box services as well where we can do the full, you know, we, we monitor the PO box and we scan them. And then, like I said, we find most people are having a high level of emails today because of COVID. Michael wants to know about your accrual reporting. Okay. Accrual reporting can be standard and it can be a custom report depending on what you are looking for. So as I mentioned, I've saved a report here uh, in the system called Outstanding Liabilities to where at any time of all the statuses, and again, statuses are also configurable, but everything in here that I have as statuses that are not in my ERP because they're being reviewed, they're pending approval, it's an exception. If I save this search at any time when I hit this button, I've got my outstanding accruals right here and I can export it into Excel and then I can slice and dice it and look at what the total is um, right here, right? 
Mm. Now, additionally, if there's a specific report, your implementation includes several standard reports and several custom reports. So if that isn't good enough and you have a, something else you want to be delivered on a daily basis, we can do that as well. Of course, aging is delivered on a daily basis. This happens to be a life cycle. It, it opened up just now uh, when I was doing the other thing. Your life cycle report will show you, you know, with a document, who had it, how long they had it, and so on. Maria wants to know whether this will support invoices that were sent through a link. Yes, um, but I'm not sure what that... I've not seen anything we don't support. So invoices that were sent through a link. So, I mean, we take PDFs, we take Word documents. Oh, but I, maybe she's saying that only the link comes to us. We could look at that. I mean, we have a company that we go actually to their, you know, how some companies make you go to a vendor portal to even get the invoice. Mm -hmm. So remember that we have our own BPO facilities back up here. So you're so, going to go fetch the invoice for folks. Right. So that's why I said we have hybrid solutions because some of the tasks that companies have are just labor intensive as some of them can be automated. Some need a little bit of manual support, but we can put it into an all inclusive price per invoice, depending on what services you need. And every company has got a little different look on that or take on that, but we can do that for you. That is something we do. Christine is asking whether you provide a supplier portal and what capabilities it includes. Okay, so the supplier portal that we do, speed here, um, we aren't license based. So the way our solution works today is you have the choice if you want all your vendors or some of your vendors to have access to the portal, it's free. Um, if your vendor master includes your vendor email address, that becomes that person's, that company's username. So it gives them secure role-based access for just their invoices. And the vendors have the ability then to see the status of the invoice. They can see those communication that we talked about. Um, so if they log in, they can see their payment information, they can see their status information, but they would only see their vendor information. They couldn't mm -hmm. see anybody else's. Right. Thomas wants to know whether you can support the workflows from his ERP. In other words, I presume integrate with those workflows. Yes, that's what we do during requirement gathering. Now, I don't know if they mean one of two things. Um, they either mean, can we mirror that and implement it with those same workflows? Yes. Um, if, when we do the implementation, some people give us, I said a data, we have a data feed, of course, for your vendor master. We have a data feed of your chart of accounts. We have a data feed for your POs and receivers and payment information. We can also get a data feed from users that talk about, if your ERP is set up this way, some companies are not set up well enough for this, mm -hmm. but we can take a data feed of users. It'll show their approval limits, who the hierarchy is and so on. So we can take that and implement it in this. Yeah. If, if they are saying that they don't want to use our workflow, then that's a different question. And we can push data that, that isn't approved into a system. Josh is wondering how you handle miscellaneous charges such as freight. Yes, those are, these are good questions. So we can handle it one of two ways. We can handle it at a header level or we can handle it at a line item level. And that again is discussed during implementation, whether you wanna do freight and miscellaneous. And when I say at a line item level, let's see if this, so you know where it says a description and the mm -hmm. line type is um, tax, freight, miscellaneous. Right. But there's other options here. So you could have us have the tax, freight, and miscellaneous at a header. And we have clients that say, even though you, I want it at a header, when you push the data as a line level, we want you to auto GL code it to certain GL codes. So if you give us a business rule 
that says our tax is this, our freight is this, our miscellaneous is this, we can keep it at the header level. And when we push the data feed in, we can push GL codes that are associated as long as there's a business rule that you can tell us. So it's kind of going to come across as a line item to you because it's going to have a GL associated. Right. Colleen wants to know whether you can support multiple entities. And I guess as a related question, um, talk to me about a shared services kind of arrangement. Yes, we, this very, very much so. That's, that's exactly what's happening in today's world. Uh, we can support multiple entities within one instance, or we can have separate instances. You know, I have a client who has three instances of Oracle. And, but I also, that client has multiple entities within one of their instances. So um, there's multiple ways of handling that. You sometimes those multiple entities have just different uh, books of, of, uh, in the accounting piece. Sometimes it's, it's divided up by the GL codes, um, but we also can have document types, subtypes, we just have to sit down and see how do you do it now and how do you want it to be segregated. Chris is asking about any mobile capabilities that your solution offers. Yes, we have a mobile app. And I think if I go backwards, I don't have to do this like this. Let's see. I go from current slide and then I go backwards. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I was trying not to have to go through this whole slide like this. But yes, we have a mobile app uh, and it supports approvals. So you can approve on a mobile app and you can search on a mobile app. What advice would you give to the folks in the line who are looking at automated solutions? Ask all these tough questions for every demo you do. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you, you got off easy, Diane. Yeah. <laughs> but well, it's so I've done a, I did at a Oracle show once, I did a presentation on how to have a successful, I don't know if I'm in my video showing my. You are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, successful implementations. You need to involve your frontline because if you don't and you get into UAT and the frontline people are trying things and they go, well, you, did you, you forgot about blah, blah, blah. It always happens. So I guess my suggestion is to always have your frontline people. If you deal with different countries, have people on that are familiar with the different rules because the different countries have different rules. Um, yeah, involve frontline people and just ask a lot of questions. Diane, thank you so much for sharing your insights with us today and for an excellent product demonstration. We're displaying Diane's contact information on the screen. I encourage you to get in touch with her to ask more questions. It's all the time we have for this product demonstration. I have just a few housekeeping notes to go over before we officially close out. We hope to see you in a few moments at our peer round tables and then again tomorrow at our presentation and other product demonstrations. And as an extra incentive for those attendees who come tomorrow, you're going to receive a free $25 DoorDash gift card. Plus, you're going to be entered to win one of two $250 Williams Sonoma gift cards. Can you believe that, Diane? 250 <laughs> bucks. Thank you again to Diane um, for a great presentation. And thank you to all of you for taking time out of your busy day to join us. This session was brought to you by IOFM and sponsored by Circulus. Thank you all and enjoy the rest of your afternoon.